Hi, I'm Jessica Elaine. It's lovely to see you, I said eyeing the flickering candles. But you know, these might not be safe to leave burning without supervision. My mother-in-law, Elaine, was busy placing yet another candle on the shelf above our new stove. Oh, Jessica, darling, these are perfectly safe. I've done this a thousand times at my house, she waved off my concern dismissively. Mark, caught between his mother's habits and my caution, tried to ease the tension. Mom, Jess is probably right. We shouldn't take any risks in the new kitchen. Elaine looked at us with a tight smile. It's just for tonight's dinner. The candles make everything feel so much more welcoming. The evening unfolded with Elaine's usual flair. Guests arrived, charmed by the soft candlelight and her extravagant decorations. Claire and Tom, our neighbors, entered looking around with a mix of admiration and concern. Isn't this a bit much, Jess? Claire whispered as she hugged me hello. I sighed. I tried to talk her out of it. Tom, overhearing, grinned. Elaine never knows when to stop. Remember the Christmas lights fiasco? I chuckled, recalling the neighborhood blackout caused by Elaine's over-the-top holiday display. Dinner was lively, the table buzzing with conversation and laughter. Elaine was in her element, playing the grand hostess. Mark kept refilling glasses, trying to smooth over his mother's more intrusive remarks directed at me. After dessert, as the guests trickled out, I noticed a few candles still flickering in the dim kitchen. Elaine, let me blow these out before we head to bed. I'll leave them, Jessica, she said with a wave of her hand. They're long burning and perfectly safe. They'll go out by morning. Already heading towards the guest room, she didn't wait for my reply. Exhausted, I decided not to argue. Mark and I went to bed, the faint scent of vanilla candles wafting through the house. Hours later, a loud pop jolted us awake. What was that? Mark shot up, alarmed. We rushed into the kitchen and were met with a terrifying sight. Flames licking up the curtains, the fire spreading quickly. Fire. Fire. I screamed, grabbing my phone to call 911 while Mark struggled with the fire extinguisher. The fire department arrived swiftly, but the damage was already done. Our beautiful kitchen, where we had envisioned so many happy memories, was now a charred and soaked mess. Sitting on the curb, watching the firefighters work, Mark put his arm around me. This is a disaster, he muttered, his voice heavy with disbelief. It was the candles, I whispered, tears of frustration and fear stinging my eyes. I told her. I told her this could happen. Elaine, wrapped in a blanket, stood nearby, her face a mixture of shock and disbelief. I, I didn't think. Claire and Tom came over, offering coffee and comfort. You can stay with us tonight, Claire said softly. Tom gave Elaine a stern look. You really need to start listening, Elaine. This could have been avoided. As dawn broke, the fire was out, but the full extent of the damage became heartbreakingly clear in the morning light. And in that moment, a new resolve formed in me. This wasn't just an accident, it was a wake-up call. I couldn't let Elaine's recklessness slide anymore. Things had to change, and I was going to make sure they did. The morning after the fire, Mark and I sat at the kitchen table, now a makeshift command center, with insurance papers and repair estimates scattered everywhere. Our once perfect kitchen was a ruin, and with each passing moment, the weight of what had happened felt heavier. Jess will get through this, Mark said, reaching across the table to squeeze my hand. I nodded, trying to muster a smile. I know, it's just overwhelming. Later that afternoon, Claire stopped by, carrying a basket of homemade muffins. Jess, there's something you should know about those candle holders Elaine used. She got them from my store, and I warned her they were part of a recall. They're a fire hazard. A chill ran down my spine, she knew, and she still used them. Claire nodded solemnly. I'm afraid so. I thought you should know. Fury and betrayal swirled inside me. I needed answers, but confronting Elaine had to be done carefully, with undeniable proof. That evening, when she came over to see the damage, the first time she'd visited since the fire, I was ready. So, you were warned about the candles? I asked, keeping my voice steady despite the anger churning inside me. Elaine stiffened, her eyes darting away. It was just a precaution, Jessica. Those warnings are often overblown. Overblown. I pressed, feeling Mark's tense gaze on us. They were recalled, Elaine, because they could cause fires. Mark stepped in, his voice tight with frustration and desperation. Mom, why didn't you listen to Claire? You put our home at risk. 
Elaine bristled, her tone defensive. I was just trying to make things nice. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. As Mark and Elaine argued, I could see the growing rift between them. Mark was torn between the family he grew up with and the life we were trying to build. The days after the fire were a blur of contractors and insurance agents constantly in and out of the house. One evening, as we sat amidst the chaos, Mark sighed deeply. I can't believe she'd be so careless, Jess. I don't even know what to say to her anymore. I reached for his hand, offering a gentle squeeze. We might need to set some boundaries with her, for our own peace. He sighed again, nodding. Yeah, I think you're right. It's just hard, you know. She's my mom. As weeks passed, our focus shifted from rebuilding the kitchen to trying to salvage our relationships. But the strain was palpable. Conversations with Elaine became increasingly sparse and tense. She remained defensive, unwilling to fully acknowledge her role in the disaster. Each day brought new challenges, and it became clear that the incident had changed everything. Our lives would never be the same. One evening, weeks after the fire, Claire, Tom, and I huddled in our living room, quietly discussing what needed to be done. The atmosphere in our home was still thick with tension, a constant reminder of Elaine's recklessness. We need to show everyone who she really is, not just tell them. Claire suggested, her determination clear. Tom nodded. I've got footage from my home security cameras from that night. It shows the fire starting from those candles she left burning. And I think I can get more. I felt the weight of the decision, but I knew it was necessary. We can compile it all into something undeniable. The plan was set. Elaine was due to be honored at an upcoming community gala for her charitable work. A perfect opportunity, given her love for public acclaim. Over the next few days, with Tom's tech skills and Claire's discreet inquiries, we gathered footage and testimonies from neighbors who had witnessed Elaine's irresponsible behavior over the years. Everything was edited into a respectful but revealing video. The night of the gala, the community hall buzzed with excitement. Elaine, dressed in her usual flamboyant style, glowed under the admiration of her peers. Mark and I arrived just in time, my stomach a knot of nerves as the honorary mentions began. When Elaine stepped up to receive her accolades, ready to bask in the glow of her supposed selflessness, the lights dimmed. The video began. At first, it showed Elaine at various community events, smiling and shaking hands. But soon the tone shifted. The video cut to the night of the fire, flames visibly flickering in the windows of our home. Next came footage of Elaine being warned by Claire at the store, dismissing the recall with a careless wave of her hand. The room grew silent, tension filling the air as the video played on, revealing not only the fire but other incidents, Elaine's reckless comments at meetings, her negligence at public events. It painted a damning picture of chronic disregard for others' safety. When the lights came back on, Elaine stood frozen. Her face was pale, her eyes darting around the room, searching for support, but the murmurs had already started, growing louder as people expressed their shock and disbelief. How could she be so careless? I can't believe she knew about the risks. Elaine tried to speak, her voice shaky. This isn't the whole story. I've always had the best intentions. The crowd's warm smiles turned cold as the reality of Elaine's negligence sank in. People she had known for years began to turn their backs, whispering about the deception. Claire leaned over to me. It needed to be done, Jess. Now everyone knows. Tom added, she can't brush this off, not this time. Mark stood beside me, a mixture of relief and sadness on his face. I'm sorry it came to this, Jess, but maybe now Mom will realize she needs to change as we left the gala. The weight of our actions hung heavily on us. Exposing the truth brought relief but the fallout was bittersweet. Elaine was held accountable, but at a cost. The streets were quiet as we drove home, reflecting our own conflicted emotions. Yet, I knew we had set necessary change in motion. In the months following the gala, the ripple effects of Elaine's exposure were profound. The once vibrant woman, who had always charmed her way through any misstep, now faced a reality she never anticipated. Mark's father, long blinded by his affection for her, was finally confronted with the full extent of her negligence. Disheartened and disillusioned, he made the heart-wrenching decision to separate from Elaine. This shift was more than emotional as struck a critical blow to her lifestyle without his financial support. Elaine was forced to downsize drastically. 
Her opulent days were over, replaced by a stark and unforgiving reality. As she struggled with her new circumstances, the legal consequences of her actions began to unfold. Empowered by her unmasking at the gala, several community members came forward with grievances they had once overlooked out of respect for her supposed generosity. Lawsuits were filed, each one a reminder that her carelessness had real consequences, and she could no longer charm her way out of accountability. Back at our newly renovated home, Mark and I found solace in our fresh start. The kitchen, once a symbol of destruction, now gleamed with modern fixtures, becoming the heart of our home again. This physical rebuilding mirrored the repairs in our own lives. Our bond deepened, strengthened by the trials we had faced together. The trust and teamwork that saw us through the renovation extended into every part of our relationship. My career also took a promising turn. I was promoted at my tech company, recognized not just for my skills but for the resilience I had shown. This new role challenged and excited me, reaffirming that personal growth often follows the toughest trials. Mark and I decided it was time to expand our family, a step we had delayed during the chaos of the past year. We approached this new chapter with a sense of hope and renewal, committed to building a home defined by love, respect, and positivity, a sharp contrast to the toxic dynamics that had once shadowed our early days as a couple. As for your question, public exposure as a method for holding someone accountable can be powerful and in some cases, necessary especially when private efforts to address harmful behavior fail repeatedly. It can force change when all other methods are exhausted. However, it comes with risks. Public shaming can sometimes go too far, causing long-term damage beyond the immediate consequences. It can strip away the opportunity for redemption or rehabilitation, turning a person's mistake into a lifelong mark of shame. While it may feel justified in extreme cases, it's important to consider whether the goal is justice or revenge, and to ensure that the person has the opportunity to learn, grow, and change. 